Bonjour and welcome, viewers and students, to Let's Speak French, Parlant Français. These lessons on basic French are short and easy. And if you follow the program regularly, I can assure you that very soon you will be able to understand French quite easily. The previous session focused on the imperative mood. In today's class, we will learn how to tell the time in French. We'll also look at a few formulas associated with time. This lesson has been divided into three sections. In the first section, I will read out a French text that focuses on telling the time. Then in the next section, I will explain the different ways of telling the time in French. And finally, in the third section, we'll do an exercise to revise what we learned in today's lesson. We'll begin the lesson with a French text. This text consists of a dialogue that takes place between a student and the secretary of a businessman. The student wants to interview the businessman and requests his secretary for an appointment. Fixer un entretien. Bonjour. Êtes-vous Madame Delphine Fournier? Oui, bonjour. Comment est-ce que je peux vous aider? Alors, je suis Albert Morel, je suis étudiant en journalisme à l'Univ. Ah, c'est vous le jeune rédacteur dont Monsieur Gauthier m'a parlé hier soir. Alors, vous voulez fixer un rendez-vous avec Monsieur Gauthier, c'est ça? Oui, exactement. D'accord. Voyons un peu son agenda. Monsieur Gauthier est très occupé les mercredis. Donc, Je ne peux absolument pas obtenir un entretien pour demain. Mais pour jeudi, je crois que ce serait possible. Monsieur Gauthier arrive au bureau à 9h pile. À 9h15, il a une réunion de conseil. Ces réunions durent environ deux heures. Après la réunion, Monsieur Gauthier va à la banque. Il rentre au bureau vers 11h moins le quart. Ensuite, il travaille jusqu'à midi et demi, sans pause. Il n'aime pas être dérangé à ce moment-là. À 13h30, il se rend à l'entrepôt de l'entreprise. Il y reste toute l'après-midi. Alors, ce ne serait pas possible le jeudi? Je crains bien que non. Voyons, vous êtes libre le vendredi à 16h? Désolé. Je donne des cours au lycée les vendredis après-midi. Le samedi alors, Monsieur Gauthier est disponible de 14h à 15h. Il peut vous accorder une interview. Parfait. Je serai ici alors à 13h50 le samedi. Bon, c'est réglé. Le samedi, je vous accueille à la réception à 14h moins 10 so this was a short text where we come across many formulas and phrases associated with time, including different ways of telling the time. In the next section, I will explain to you how to tell the time in French. When learning about time, the first important thing to know is numbers. One cannot tell or read the time if one doesn't know the numbers. I'm not going to revise the numbers in today's lesson. But if you need to refresh your memory, please refer to the fifth lesson of chapter 1. In French, one must always use the word heure when telling the time. Heure has more than one meaning. But when it is used in the context of telling the time, its English equivalent is o'clock. For example, Monsieur Gauthier arrive au bureau à 9h. Mr. Gauthier reaches the office at 9 o'clock. In English, the phrase o'clock can be dropped. For example, it is perfectly right to say Mr. Gauthier reaches the office at 9. But in French, 
one cannot omit the word er. Monsieur Gauthier arrive au bureau à neuf is grammatically wrong. One must always mention the word er when telling the time. Monsieur Gauthier arrive au bureau à neuf heures. This practice of always including the word er is also reflected in written French. What I mean by this is that when writing down a time, the French insert the letter H between the hour and the minute. For example, Monsieur Gauthier arrive au bureau à neuf heures. Since the word er always needs to be stated when telling the time, its abbreviated form, that is the letter H, is always used in written French. This abbreviation is as mandatory in written French as the word er is in spoken French. In English, the time isn't written this way. A colon is used to separate the hour from the minute. For example, Mr. Gautier reaches office at 9 o'clock. If you look at this sentence once again, Monsieur Gautier arrive au bureau à neuf you will notice we add an S to er. This is because er is a feminine singular noun. When a number other than one precedes it, er becomes plural. So we say deux heures for two o'clock, trois heures for three o'clock, etc. Now let me show you how to say one o'clock in French. The French translation for one is un. So from the above pattern, it would seem logical that one o'clock translates as un heure. But un heure is wrong. This is because the number has to agree with the gender of the noun it qualifies. As I've already told you, er is feminine. So when un precedes er, it has to change to une. Hence, one o'clock is translated as une heure. Here's a table that summarizes this idea. Une heure, one o'clock. Sept heure, seven o'clock. These are ten o'clock. The difference between 12 hour clock and 24 hour clock. In English, the time is expressed on a 12 hour clock. To distinguish between 3 in the morning and 3 in the afternoon, the terms AM and PM are used. So 3 AM indicates 3 in the morning, while 3 PM indicates 3 in the afternoon. French doesn't have these two terms. So, du matin may be used for a.m. and de l'après-midi from noon until about 6 p.m. and du soir from 6 p.m. until midnight. The reason why I said du matin, de l'après-midi and du soir may be used is because in French, the time is usually expressed on a 24-hour clock. So 3 a.m. would be translated as 3 heures, while 3 p.m. as 15 heures. Albert goes to bed at 3 a.m. Albert va au lit à 3 heures du matin. Albert va au lit à 3 heures. Mr. Gauthier has a meeting at 3 p.m. Monsieur Gauthier a une réunion à 3 heures de l'après-midi. Monsieur Gauthier a une réunion à 15 heures. Let me repeat. Albert goes to bed at 3 a.m. Albert va au lit à 3 heures du matin. Albert va au lit à 3 heures. Mr. Gauthier has a meeting at 3 p.m. Monsieur Gauthier a une réunion à 3 heures de l'après-midi. Monsieur Gauthier a une réunion à 15 heures. Now let me show you how to say the different fractions of time. In French, there are two different ways of telling the time, with numerals 
or with fractions such as car which means quarter and dummy which means half. 515 means in numerals sankar cars or in fraction sankar a car. A car means and a quarter. 630 Caesar trente or Caesar et demi. A demi means and half. 745 7h45 or 8h moins le quart. Moins le quart means quarter two. Here are the other timings. Midnight is minuit. Noon is midi. One o'clock, une heure. Four five, quatre heures cinq. Six ten, six heures dix. Nine twenty, neuf heures vingt. 10.25, 10h25, 11.35 has two different ways, 11h35 or midi moins 25. One forty pm, 13h40 or 14h moins 20. 6.50, 10h50 or 19h moins 10 and 11.55 pm, 23h55 or minuit moins 5. There is an official rule regarding the time, but most people tend to overlook it. According to this rule, the fractions that is a car, a demi and moins le car are used only from 1 to 12. But once you are into the 24 hour clock, the numerals are used instead of the fractions. Therefore, 7.30 would be 19h30 and not 19h30. So these are the different ways of telling the fractions of time. Now let me show you how to ask someone the time. What time is it? Is translated as quelle heure est-il? Quelle heure est-il? While answering, one always begins with il est. You may wonder why is the masculine pronoun il used when referring to the feminine noun er. The reason for this is that il functions as an impersonal subject pronoun which does not refer to any noun in particular. And finally, let me show you a few prepositions that are associated with time. The preposition a, when used with time, always indicates a precise hour. For example, Madame Fournier sort de la maison à 8 heures. Mrs. Fournier leaves home at 8. Albert se lève à 5 heures. Albert gets up at 5 o'clock. Environ and vers indicate an approximate time. Il rentre au bureau vers 11 heures moins le quart. He returns to the office around quarter to 11. Ces réunions durent environ deux heures. These meetings last about two hours. De à indicates from what time to what time. Monsieur Gauthier est disponible de 14 heures à 15 heures. Mr. Gauthier is available from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. Jusqu'à indicates till what time. Ensuite, il travaille jusqu'à midi et demi 
sans pause. Then he works till 12.30 without a break. Let me repeat. The preposition a, when used with time, always indicates a precise hour. For example, Madame Fournier sort de la maison à 8 heures. Mrs. Fournier leaves home at 8. Albert se lève à 5 heures. Albert gets up at 5 o'clock. Environ and vers indicate an approximate time. Il rentre au bureau vers 11 heures moins le quart. He returns to the office around quarter to eleven. Ces réunions durent environ deux heures. These meetings last about two hours. De a indicates from what time to what time. Monsieur Gauthier est disponible de 14 heures à 15 heures. Mr. Gauthier is available from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. Jusqu'à indicates till what time. Ensuite, il travaille jusqu'à midi et demi sans pause. Then he works till 12.30 without a break. Before we proceed to the next section and revise today's lesson, let me explain to you a third meaning of the word heure. Heure, as you know, means time or a clock. But heure can also mean hour. Ces réunions durent deux heures. These meetings last two hours. Elle m'a fait attendre des heures. She kept me waiting for hours. Let me repeat. Ces réunions durent deux heures. These meetings last two hours. Elle m'a fait attendre des heures. She kept me waiting for hours. In this third section, we will revise what we learned in today's session on time. A short exercise has been provided below. We need to find the option that is the right translation of the time. 10.45 a.m. 10 h quart. 10 h moins le quart. 11 h moins le quart. The right answer is C. 11 h moins le quart. 12.30 a.m. Minuit et demi, 11h30, midi et quart. The right answer is A, minuit et demi. 7.40 a.m. 7h moins 20, 8h moins 20, 6h40. The right answer is B, 8h moins 20. 3.20 p.m. 15h20, 3h20 du matin, 15h. The right answer is A, 15h20. 10pm, 23h, 22h, 9h du soir. The right answer is B, 22h. With this, we come to the end of our third lesson. This lesson was divided into three sections. In the first section, I read out a French text that focused on telling the time. In the second section, I explained the different ways of telling the time. We also learned a few formulas associated with time. And finally, in the third section, we revised today's lesson by doing an exercise. I hope you enjoyed today's session. In the next class, we'll examine the different structures for speaking about the weather. I hope to see you in the next class. Thank you and à bientôt. See you soon.